If it's impossible, do it tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Lane, can I get that paper from Sarah yes. or is it upstairs? Yes. Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for joining us here today for some very exciting news. We are joined by driver Raja Farouk, GMS Team Racing President Mike Bean, founder of the Wendell Scott Foundation, Ward Scott, and NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, it feels good to say that again, Progr Chevrolet Program Manager, Dame Pierre Tony. <laughs> Mike, so you've got us here at this big, nice, fancy place. Spill the beans, man. What are we talking about here today? Uh, so, yeah, we've been waiting on this for a while. So excited to have Raja and Warwick and the Wendell Scott Foundation and Dave Stewart and uh, Jim and everyone involved in this. Uh, Raja and Daniel, they raced hard this year in the ARCA Series. And, you know, uh, it's a great opportunity for us in so many different ways. And I was telling Warwick that uh, I was nine years old in... Uh, Wendell Scott and I worked in the concession stand at Hickory Speedway and uh, Wendell Scott and RP and Ned Jarrett become huge heroes of mine because they're the only drivers that didn't try to run me out of the pit so I was but they were always so nice to me but this is a big day for us uh, you know with Grant and you know Raja and Daniel I feel like we had three really good drivers you know teams and we're excited about the future definitely and uh, it, it's just association that we feel is right for us and Raja and you know to put the team together and um, we're going to I feel like we're going to do big things and this is a guy and Daniel and Grant that we can do it some exciting news for sure Raja congrats what say you about all of this man how are you feeling I can finally talk about it in, yeah. In, yeah. In public, anyway, right? In public, yeah. <laughs> it's it's definitely been a long time coming, but I'm just really honored to have everything kind of come together at this point for it to be at GMS with the support of GM and with the Wendell Scott Foundation and the Wendell Scott family. It's really the the best of of every world, not both worlds. Um, and I'm just really honored to be at a place with you know this much resources and assets that I can use every day and just be the best athlete I can be. Very cool. So I think I can speak for everyone in the room, uh, certainly everyone uh, at NASCAR, and I'm going to take some liberties, even speaking from the HBCU community. We're excited uh, about your future, excited about 2023 and what you do even even beyond that. So congratulations again. Thank you. Warwick, you and I have, have known each other obviously for some time, but yeah. uh, I know a little bit about the gala. We were talking a little bit about that, but please uh, tell, tell the rest of the room a little bit about the mission of the yes. of the Wendell Scott Foundation uh, and, and, and what you all aim to do. Yes, well, you know, we are extremely excited uh, to play a vital role in Raja furthering his career. Um, the Scott family has known about Raja for quite some time, ever since he was in high school doing uh, school projects and Black History Month projects and things of that nature. 
And so we're excited to play a role. Um, the Wendell Scott Foundation, we, we exist to provide STEM education at the highest level for students to find themselves at risk or in an at-risk population. And we know Raja has um, learned from iRacing. Um, and that's one of the things that, that we do at the Wendell Scott Foundation. We provide um, iRacing opportunities, cultural enrichment. Um, my grandfather himself, Wendell Scott, um, he has a history in mentoring. Um, but he also has a uh, history, um, obviously, as a team owner as well. Um, so this carries the spirit of that entrepreneurship. Um, and we know that Raja is the next vanguard of the sport. Um, and we're just proud to be here with him in order to make that, make that happen. Um, we were blessed to uh, be able to work with the Stewart family um, to create this opportunity for Raja. Um, and on behalf of both families, we are extremely excited and very proud of Raja and the Karoo family. Thank you, sir. It'd be great. That's great news. Dane, uh, obviously Chevrolet has played such a vital role in, in Raja's development over the past couple years. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, things from the Chevy perspective? <clears throat> yeah, sure. You know, we, we formed a relationship with uh, Rev Racing about a year ago. And uh, through that relationship, we got to know Raja well. Uh, got to see his capabilities on and off the track. And uh, really, so this is kind of a natural extension of that program. We've been associated with GMS for a long time. Uh, and it makes a, it really gives us a, perf a perfect fit uh, for Raja, and we're really looking forward to seeing what he can do on the racetrack full-time in the Truck Series next year. Great. We will now open, in, open the floor to any questions that we have. Uh, Roger, do you see yourself as a short track guy? I mean, first truck race is Daytona, is Daytona Beach, I guess. So, uh, how, how do you feel about racing? You know, starting off at, the, at probably the biggest race of the year. Uh, what's your name? Lewis Frankenworth. Mr. Oh, how do I? We haven't met. I'll do Mr. Lewis. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll just do that. Make it easier. Yeah, to, yeah. to be honest, sir, I mean. Lewis. Mr. Lewis. All right. Cool. So I would say. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, it's hard really to say what type of racetrack. I mean, we race at road courses, dirt tracks, you know, high banks of Daytona and Talladega, all the way to the short tracks so of like Martinsville and Richmond. So it's hard to pick one, I guess, style of racing. I grew up, I guess, in the last three years racing Hickory and Tri-County and Florence. So I can't just pick one. I have to be able to adapt to them all. So I guess I just have to be versatile. So, so Raja is the recipient of the Wendell Scott Trailblazer Award, which is a NASCAR-created uh, award um, that has been going out for years. Um, was able to work with Brandon to now present that award at our signature fundraising event that we have. It's the Wendell Scott Legacy Gala. Um, we have it February 11, 2023, Charlotte Convention Center in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Well, Raja being the recipient of the Wendell Scott Trailblazer Award, it was because of his candor it was because of the type of family that he comes from, um, but it was also due to his tenacity and his proficiency. Um, he's highly proficient to come from a non-traditional background in motorsports and to achieve what he has achieved thus far. Um, he's clearly a next level talent, um, and we are proud that my grandfather's legacy can play a role in just kind of ushering that. You know, we, we're spiritual people and we believe, we believe in our ancestors, and so we feel like um, Raja has an has a, a extra layer um, or a fifth dimension, if you will, or inner voice um, that will really allow him to make the most of his opportunity. So we know where he comes from, um, as we knew where Wendell Scott came from. And so those are the ties that bind. Thank you. Mike, we know your driver lineup. Can you share your crew chief lineup for the three trucks? Yeah, I can. Uh, very excited about this. You know, Jeff Hensley's coming back with Grant, which, you know, very thankful for that. Chad Walters, he's going to do Raja. You know, Chad's coming back. And we got a, uh, with Daniel Travis Sharp, very excited about Travis, young man, that him and Daniel's had some success. So I uh, feel like the crew chief and the driver lineup's in pretty good shape there. Uh, they hadn't got mad and quit, so I guess we're doing okay. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, but yeah, I'm very thankful to have those three guys be part of this because they all work hard and, 
uh, Hensley and Chad, you know, they've been there before and to come back and we really appreciate, you know, them coming. And like I said, Travis is, uh, you know, a young man that's, you know, Mark Martin speaks very highly of Travis and uh, look for big things from all three teams. Not necessarily racing as much. What was it like having to sit on this for so long? What was it like trying to sleep last night? And how do you think you'll sleep tonight? Well, <laughs> yes, I would say, William. Um, well, first we had workouts this morning, and Josh, Josh Wise asked me what my sleep score was. It was not good, so that answers your question. I mean, it's been. I have a really good, I guess, close circle of friends and family, and so just keeping it within those walls has been kind of great to have a great support system. But in terms of like not saying anything, it's not gonna lie. It's kind of hard because like it's hard because you see things like said about it and you can't you have to control yourself not to fire off a tweet at yeah. like 12 in the morning you know so i mean it's a good problem to have for sure any additional questions Seth, i got a kick in tired.net uh roger having the wendell scott foundation on the truck does that add any uh, pressure for you for next year not at all i mean i don't said i'm gonna be honest man like this is not pressure like pressure is like having to pay rent or like I'm so serious, like or getting food on the table. Like this is a privilege to be in the situation with the, the Scott Foundation and with all the partners that have been with me since day one from back home in DC to people that I've grown to know over the last couple of years in the racing industry. I don't see it as pressure, man. I see it as opportunity. Like it it'd be different if um, you know, we were trying to get to this point and it was uncertain if I would be racing full time or racing period, but we you know, we have this chance, so I don't see any pressure, man. I just see a, a very big opportunity. Kevin Schwarzy with uh, the RacingTimes.com. Uh, maybe describe your emotions. You led the ARCA points up until about midway in the season, and then on comes your teammate and beat you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, man, I really learned a lot through the ARCA season and really just this whole year as, as in general, just because I used to really feel like you could do superhuman things in a race car and like, you know, make it make things happen that were surreal. In reality, that's not the case. And I made some mistakes really trying to will something out of nothing and compounding bad days and making them worse. And so going from leading the points and feeling on top of the world to having like a really bad, you know, five, seven race stretch and across Arca Trucks and Xfinity, it really taught me a lot as an athlete, but also as a young man and kind of the things I need to do to make sure I'm good off the racetrack mentally and physically and, you know, prepare to compete at the highest level. So I appreciate that question. And a follow-up to that, how, um, what are your thoughts on running dirt? It was a lot of fun. I've, I've run Millbridge. I've sucked at it, but I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole lot of fun. Um, like that, that stuff is, is a real difficult discipline. Uh, but I feel like even in the handful of times that I've, you know, had the chance of racing at Millbridge with Mike Carver and through Chevy and Josh, I've developed like tenfold from every time I've been able to be on that that clay out there. So every time I ch every chance I get, I'm going to try to take advantage of it, and I feel like it just makes me a lot better as a driver. Chris Wilner, MRN, uh, you touched on coming up with Daniel, but what impact and how excited are you to work with Grant and, and the veteran leadership that he's going to kind of have with the three of you guys? Yeah, Chris, I'm really excited to work with Grant. He's helped me a lot this year through the ARCA races, even, even though technically we were not teammates, you know, racing for Revan, you know, they were at GMS. But really, with Grant and Daniel, I feel like I'm still really on the inexperienced side of things in terms of racing as a whole. I think I've still run less than 100 total stock car races, period. So I feel like, again, a really big opportunity to learn from uh, some really experienced individuals with not only Grant and Jeff, but my crew chief, Chad, and a lot of the guys that I've come to to, to know at GMS. So I'm just, again, really excited for this opportunity, and I'm going to make the most of it. Trey Downey, Motor Racing Network. Um, obviously, running trucks will be your primary focus next year full-time, but do you plan to run any ARCA or Xfinity next year? Yeah, Trey, I mean, I would love to. I mean, obviously, it's driven by money. So we're, we got to see kind of what that looks like. The first priority was getting this stuff in order, and now that you know, this, we have the schedule for the season and we're full time. Obviously, now we're going to kind of see what other options are available for Xfinity and Arca stuff and even late model stock or pro late model stuff. But it will be a Chevy. So that's, that's all I can really say. Yeah. 
Great. Appreciate all the questions. Any further questions? All right, Mabel Scott, one of the Scott family. <laughs> I want to say congratulations to, to you. I know you will do well. And I know we have a, a new member of the Petty team, uh, NASCAR champion over here to my left, uh, the new face of Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just wondering if you're going to be looking to him for some, some help as well. Yeah, Ms. Scott, I mean, just to get on my soapbox a little bit, like I, for my, you know, second grade, I just showed him this picture right before we came out here. I dressed up as Jimmy Johnson for Halloween at my elementary school in D.C. So it's, uh, I'll post that picture somewhere. But, I mean, he was, uh, he was my favorite driver growing up, him and Bubba Wallace, and just how not only how good of a driver he was, but how he was off the racetrack with his interviews and how he treated his race team and uh, just regular race fans. So to be, to be able to develop a relationship with him is really a, a dream come true, and uh, it means a lot. For those who didn't have the pleasure of being upstairs, it was cool to see when Roger met Jimmy for the first time. He kind of, I think Jimmy was like, are you awake? Are you excited? And I, I didn't want to bust him out, but this oh, was a great time. He was in awe, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure if you guys addressed this. Uh, is there significance to the tw uh, number 24? Nope. It's Kobe's number. It's after 23, so it's 425. Or, Willie Mays. or yeah, Willie Mays. Yeah, Kobe, Willie Mays. Yeah. Well, thank you. Appreciate yeah. everyone's questions. Thank I you. think, uh, are there breakouts or anything? Thanks, everyone. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that so makes Willie, sense. Willie was yeah. growing up. I never met him. I, I met famous people, and I'm like, well, if I would meet Willie, still alive, I would be like a little kid. Oh, that's high enough. Not even Jeff. Okay, okay. I'm older than Jeff. Okay. Good luck, man. Thank you, sir. Good luck, Willie. You can always come. You won't see me a whole lot. Most I cover a couple. Right, right. I'll be following. I'll see you around. Nice to meet you, sir. Yep.